Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, president of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about using Beautybox video within DaVinci Resolve. As you can see, I'm in Resolve 11 right now. And as you can also see, uh, our screen resolution is not quite as optimized as it might be for Resolve. So we're working within this uh, rather small window here as we want to be zoomed in and actually be able to see the changes that happen on her face. So we want to have an actual size. And that means it's going to be mostly cropped, but uh, we'll just have to make do with that. So let's dive into it. Uh, the first step is to go to the color section of Resolve, uh, which is where the OpenFX plugins live. And that is where you will find Digital Anarchy and Beauty Box. And if you don't see this, you might need to click on the effects button down here. If you click on that, that will show you your open effects plugins. And we can grab Beauty Box from there and just drag it onto our clip, drag it onto our node. And the first thing we're gonna do is scroll down to the very bottom of the parameter list and you'll find two buttons down here. Uh, and these are pretty important. The register button will allow you to enter in your serial number. Uh, if you have not entered in your serial number, you're going to see a crosshatch pattern on the video. That's our watermark. And by clicking register, it will let you enter in your serial number and that will get rid of that watermark. And then the second thing that we're going to look at is analyze frame. Actually, before we touch that, let's talk about use GPU. If you have problems with your beauty box, more often than not, it's a problem with the video card. Sometimes plugins like Beautybox will conflict with the host app when trying to use the GPU. And this can cause crashes or other kind of weird behavior. And if you see that happening, the first thing you want to try is turning off use GPU. That will make Beautybox slower, but it may resolve whatever problems that you're having. So just a note about that checkbox. It can be very important if you're running into crashes or other issues. So let's talk about Analyze Frame. Uh, what Analyze Frame does is run face detection and some other algorithms that we use to figure out what the skin tones are within the image. The face detection works great if you have a talking headshot, as we do here. If that's not the case, there are other ways of, for Beautybox to figure out what the skin tones are. But we use face detection when possible as a bit of a cheat to find areas that we know are going to have skin tones. And so that helps the other algorithms along. And so when we click on Analyze Frame, what's going to happen is it's going to figure out what the skin tones are. You'll see, a couple, you'll see a couple color chips up here, which have the default colors. And Analyze Frame is going to change those once we click it, which I just did. And so now if I go back, you'll see that we have different colors up here. It's gone through, analyzed the footage, and we now have an automatic mask built for the skin tones. And you can see just by clicking that button, we've gone from the original, which is this, to the beauty box version. And we'll do that one more time. And you can see that we've done a nice job of removing a lot of the blemishes and wrinkles and other skin problems that she has. Now, it doesn't get rid of everything. We're not trying to airbrush the image completely. What we really strive to do is sort of just take the edge off of what HD and 4K are showing us these days. You're seeing so much detail. You're seeing every last blemish and pore and wrinkle. And Beautybox is really designed to really just take that edge off. You're not going to take someone who's 45 and make her look like she's 20, but you can take her and make her look better than she has on video in about 10 years. It's really just applying a layer of digital makeup and we really strive to keep things looking realistic and subtle, but still creating a significant difference. And you can see that we've done that in this case. Now we can take a look at what the mask is showing us. You can see that we have a pretty nice mask for the skin tones. The areas in shadow, I'm leaving in shadow because there's not really much texture there. And if we try to include those areas in our mask, it's going to include every dark area in the image. Obviously, this isn't ideal lighting, but Beautybox does work around that. 
Now you can make adjustments to the mask. For example, there is an add color tool that will allow you to add in shades of gray that, that the automatic algorithms didn't quite pick up. And all we need to do is just click on the shades of gray that we want to include. Say we want to include this gray area on her cheek. We can do that just by clicking on it. And that will remove that area as well as improve her forehead a little bit. Now, one thing to note about this for add color to work, you need to have the open effects overlay selected down here in this menu. By default, I believe it's set to the qualifier. And if you have that set, add color will not work. It has to be set to open effects overlay. And you'll see the open effects orange logo down here, just as you do for the uh, control panel over here. And as you noticed, when I clicked on it, it can take a second or two for it to register. So give it a few seconds before you start to think that it hasn't worked. Although we have seen situations where it does not work and usually by switching to off and then switching back to open effects overlay, we'll reset it and add color will start working again. And so we can click on her other cheek here and that gives us an even better mask and I think we are good to go. Now you can also use the hue, saturation, and value ranges to further make adjustments to the mask a little bit. You can increase the contrast of it or expand and include more areas. But usually the default settings work pretty well, so we're going to set this more or less back to where they were. It's a little bit higher contrast. But you can adjust that to taste and get a mask that suits your footage. Now the main controls, let's turn show mask off and start talking about the smoothing settings. So this is what's going to control the overall look of Beauty Box, how much smoothing is applied. The default values work pretty well for HD footage. Uh, you may want to scale them down a little bit. Usually with both parameters, between 15 and about 40 are the ranges that they work well in. Uh, you can crank the smoothing amount and skin detail amounts all the way up and get more of an airbrush look if that's what you're going for. Where it's become much more obvious that there's a blur being applied and you're losing most of the skin texture. Usually that's not what you're going to go for. Especially with Beauty Box, we really, again, try to make this look like digital makeup and keep things looking realistic and subtle. And cranking the values all the way up doesn't really do that. So we'll set these down a bit. And now it goes back to something that looks a little bit more realistic. Uh, one interesting thing you can do is set skin detail smoothing down to a negative amount. And that will actually bring the blemishes out. So if you want to make somebody look worse, just set skin detail smoothing to negative 100 and uh, you will achieve that. It's a fabulous way of selling skincare products. You just simply crank the dial from minus 100 to 30 or 40 and uh, instantly it looks better. But I know none of you would ever do such a thing. Anyways, those are the smoothing controls. Contrast Enhance increases the contrast of the overall image. Uh, obviously, with smoothing, you can soften the image up a bit, and Contrast Enhance will try and bring back a little bit of that contrast. So those are the two main sections, the smoothing controls and the mask controls. There is some built-in color correction for the plugin. Uh, obviously, you're in DaVinci Resolve, which has pretty amazing color correction tools, uh, so you probably will not want to be doing the color correction here as these are very simplistic and uh, basically just there for very minor modifications. But they are there if you want to use them. Uh, the presets give you different looks, black and white, adding tints, doing all sorts of different color effects and styles. Uh, again, you're in DaVinci Resolve, so you're probably better off doing that type of work with Resolve's other tools than necessarily doing it here. And certainly, if you're just using Beauty Box for doing some beauty work, you don't need to worry about the presets at all. It's 
The main magic of Beauty Box is all in the smoothing controls and the mask. And then last but not least is the shine removal. And this will allow you to reduce the amount of shine that you might have from bright lights shining on shiny skin. So if you look at her cheek here and her forehead, if we crank up shine removal, it's going to reduce that just a bit. Again, we strive to keep things looking realistic. So it's not just going to plaster over those areas, but it will help diminish them and make the overall look of the image a little bit better. So we'll leave that cranked up. And that's pretty much it. You know, once you have the mask and the smoothing amounts set on the first frame, you're pretty much good to go. Beauty Box is going to track the skin tones throughout the rest of your footage. As long as your lighting doesn't change, skin tones are going to remain the same. Your mask is going to be just as good as it was on the first frame. And that's really all you have to do. And quite often, just clicking on Analyze Frame down here is enough to let Beauty Box do it automatically, figure out what those skin tones are, figure out what the mask is, dial in the settings. So it really doesn't require all that much work for basic beauty work. Now obviously you can get into more complicated things by using masks to section off just certain areas like her cheek or her forehead and use Beauty Box to just affect those areas. And we certainly have many customers that use it in that way. But those are the basics of Beauty Box. You can find out more information at our website, which is digitalanarchy.com. We've got tutorials and other resources, as well as the demos of our other plugins for video, especially Flickr Free, which is our new deflicker tool, which also works in DaVinci Resolve. So thanks for joining me, and hopefully see you soon in another tutorial. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at sales at digitalanarchy.com. Or you can give us a call at 415-287-6069. Thanks a lot.